Hi, I am Jacob Wagner. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with the pause effector. So in this scene, we have a linear cloner with 10 clones in it. We're going to add a pause effector. So we click add effector button. And in type, we will select pause effector. I'm going to work with the position and I'm going to work with scale. So we go into position and set the position Y to 200. And when we do that, we can already see what the pause effector is doing. It's creating this sign pattern. But this is different than the other effectors that we already covered in this video series, because the pause effector does not just create a state, it actually animates them. So if I run the timeline now, you can see that they are being animated in this sine curve pattern. And that is without creating any keyframes at all. To explain to you exactly what it's doing, we need to go into the effector settings. And I'm going to take this desync value and put it down to zero. Now when I'm running the timeline, you can see that they are pulsing up and down. So that's why it's called the pulse effector, because they're basically just pulsing from one state to another. And I could put in some scale too. So let's give it uh, minus 50 and minus 50 in the scale. And we can see that now it's both pulsing the position and the scale. Now, in order to get it into a sine wave, we need to use this desync value. So if you put desync back to one, they're all pulsing in the same speed, but they're being desynchronized. So they're creating this wavy pattern. And we can control the wave pattern by controlling the frequency and the desync. So if we set frequency up to two, for instance, now they're going to move really fast. If we set it down to something lower, like 0.5, now they're going to move really slow. And then we can control the desync to get the exact waveform that we like. If we set this to two, or maybe even three, you can see that we are now getting more narrow waves. I'm going to jump down to this offset value now. The offset value can offset the desynchronization pattern. So if I put the timeline at the first frame and I want the first clone to start all the way down here, I can use the offset pattern to get it to start exactly where I want it to start. You could also turn off this use time tick box. And now it's not going to use the time anymore. So if I play back the animation, it's not going to move at all. So instead of using the time, I could also just keyframe the offset. And that would also create an animation for me. Let's put that back to zero and turn on use time again. The next value is absolute. It works like on the other effectors that if you take it on, it's going to, in this case, pick a value between zero and 200, where if it's off, it's going to pick a value between minus 200 and plus 200. The next two checkboxes are a little bit funny. The first one is called loop. And if you turn that on, then instead of going up and down and up and down, they are always going to start up and then they're going to go down and then they're going to jump to the upside again. So when you play back, it's going to look something like this. And the next one called jump will only position them at the minimum or the maximum value. So if you play back now, it's going to look something like this. So 
the last two properties here is ease in and ease out. If you turn off ease in, it's only going to ease at the lower end of the pulse. And we could do the opposite. We can turn off ease in and turn off ease out. And now it's almost going to be like they are jumping on the floor. Not quite, but kind of, I guess. Let's turn that back on. And let's have a look at use position and angle. As a default, the pause effect is going to look at the index number of each of the clones to determine where they should be positioned in this pulse. Instead of using the index number, we could use the position in this XY space. And we could do that by switching on use position. Now the pattern is going to change quite a bit. So when you switch to use position, you normally need to adjust the desync as well. So let's put this down a little bit. Maybe, maybe two is all right. So now we got the same pattern here. What's really great about using the position instead of the index numbers are that if I select the cloner now and I drag it across the states, you can see that they are now animating into the pulse. So it's almost like an invisible wave pattern exists in the scene now. So if I animate this guy from one side to another, it's going to pulse through the scene. Which, of course, could be pretty cool in many cases. To explain what the next one, Angle, is doing, I'm going to switch to a different type of cloner. Let's use a grid cloner for that. And just gonna space those out a little bit. And let's turn off position. When I run this timeline, you can see that it's creating a wavy pattern that is horizontal. If we go into angle and we set that to 90 degrees, it's now going to create a radial pattern that is vertical instead. But it doesn't have to be vertical or horizontal, it can be any angle you would like. So maybe 45 degrees, it would be going this way across the clones. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers the pulse effector. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.